Hey guys, I'm going to be showing you something pretty interesting. Um, I'm going to be preparing this character um, to be usable by the programmer already, even though the animations are not complete. Um, how I'm going to do that is I'm going to be um, creating a white silhouette for the character, all the character's frames. Um, so what I've done here is I've merged the color layer um, so that uh, all the colors that I've already done, I'm just going to um, use the alpha lock and color her white. Um, so there's quite a few frames here. Her, her idle animation is a ton of frames. Um, so what I'm going to do is just going to color all of them white. In fact, there's a brush that's faster for this. There we go. And uh, I think I may have talked about this brush in a different video, but if I haven't and you guys want to know about this brush, then I can tell you about it in another video. But for now, I'm just going to use it to quickly fill her in. And I changed the background to gray so that you guys, um, so that it, uh, it's not just for you guys, but it's for myself too. Just so that um, it's clear that the rest of her body is white. I'm going to just make sure I didn't mix any, miss any pixels here. And just from watching this, if, if there's any specific tips you guys want in animation, like animating a character sprites for a game, um, just let me know because... Uh, I really had a lot of I've really had a lot of fun animating this character. A lot of these animations were done in I think 2017 or 2018. Um, I could probably do them a bit better now, but um, okay. So this is where the next frame that I haven't done anything. So what I'm just gonna do I'm gonna take this brush and I'm gonna turn off the alpha log and I'm just gonna fill her in. This is called so this is um, in some. Uh, programs this is called the lasso fill tool um, but it's just a way of uh, basically it's the brushes acts as a lasso tool and it just fills in all the parts that you need so if I can get this ready all the frames then um, the programmer will easily be able to use these uh, frames with transparency and they will still look good in the game that we're trying to make. Um, so the programmer is a friend of mine, his name is Nick, uh, and we are trying to make this fighting game together. And we've kind of been on this project for a long time and we kind of got lost, right? So there's what's called the world building trap. And it's something I kind of got lost in when I knew I had one of 12 characters and then I would try to do all these backstories for them and I tried to really get their character designs to be something cohesive and I feel like I was able to achieve that but then I started writing all this lore like all these countries and all these other characters and building a world map and stuff like that which is nice and it feels nice to have a fully fleshed out world but um, it comes to a point where you kind of just need to execute and tell the story and show people things rather than get lost in the world building trap and you just get lost world building forever um, whether or not it's actually useful so um, I'm just assuming where a lot of the space, uh, where a lot of the flesh is, even though a lot of these frames are going to be stick figures. I'm not sure I'm going to be if I'm going to be able to do it all in this one video. But you guys can kind of get the gist of what I'm doing here, just kind of filling her in, because what's going to happen is that um, if I turn off the background layer, like this, like that, and you're going to have transparency, and what's left is going to be a white silhouette. Um, so the programmer can just easily throw these in and then, you know, mess with the frame data, mess with the, uh, the animation speeds. Um, and it's all going to be usable for a demo. And then as long as, you know, the body proportions are all correct, um, you know, the programmer can already use sprites like this. Um, now, to call them sprites is kind of interesting because these are, these are quite large PNG files. But yeah, they're still sprites. Um, but the programmer can use these. Uh, and start applying things like hitboxes, hurtboxes, invincibility, um, animation speed, all sorts of things. So I'm, what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to put in empty frames where all the transitions are. And this will be a very long video if I do all of it. So why don't I just finish the this walk animation and then I'll, and then I'll end the video. Just so you guys can see the whole thing. And I'll show you, I guess, the saving, the naming schematic that we use. 
Now, see, I didn't even draw her head, so I just kind of have to guess where it is. But still, it's still usable enough. And you can see this process is... Um, it looks slow, but this is like, you know, we, my friend and I have... I've, I've talked about this on my stream. I've talked about this um, before with my friend a lot. It's like... Um, you know, what is the fastest way to color animation? And I haven't really come up with anything faster than this tool. It's such a good tool. See, what's interesting is that um, I might have drawn, uh, done her head bigger if I were to animate this now, but it looks like in these moving frames, her head is a little bit small. So if I actually animate that, I might actually adjust the size. And this will also help me for when I actually go in and animate it, then I kind of know where all her body parts are and I will be able to put the lines in the right place according to this white silhouette. Okay. So yeah, let's go all the way to the end of this walk animation. And I wonder, you know, there's something about drawing in general, the repetition of it, that you get faster at, what, at whatever it is you're doing if you just repeat it over and over. And I think even with this whole lasso thing, if I can get my hand more precise, then I can be able to do these things really fast. So in fact, I'm going to be trying right now to speed up. Let's try to speed up. I know that... Um, I do have a lot of muscle memory when it comes to actually drawing these forms, and especially this character, because I've drawn this character more than any other character. Not only these hundreds of frames here, but tons of sketches. Um, obviously, my most uh, uh, time dedicated to original character and to her story. I'm excited to tell her story, of course. Yeah, I'm just kind of guessing here for some of those where I don't have any outlines yet. But again, it's just to make this usable for the programmer. And in fact, this is just a walk cycle, so the programmer doesn't actually have to do anything with these um, movements besides, you know, make the character uh, move back and forth, and then he has all the frames to make the character move back and forth. So this is just forward movement. Um, I might do the rest on stream. If you guys ever want to pop in my stream, twitch.tv slash chokenator. But I'm just going to do this much for now. And it looks like we only have four frames left. So after I do this, I'm, I'm going to show you how I save the images and what they're going to look like. Notice there's a lot of empty space on the canvas, and in fact, because she's holding a huge hammer, a huge mallet, um, a lot of the space is needed. I'm just going to kind of keep all the frames the same resolution, image resolution. So this uh, looks like we have maybe a couple more frames. Um, to be honest, I made this walk cycle a long time ago, like several years ago. So there's probably too many frames in this walk cycle. But to be honest, I mean, you look at three, Street Fighter Third Strike, and um, that's considered to be one of the smoothest fighting games uh, when it comes to animation. Um, there are some characters with some pretty elaborate, um, you know, idle stances, walk cycles. So I don't mind making this kind of smooth. Okay, one more here. Again, we're going to try to speed up. And then I can just use, I can just turn the brush into an eraser and then sort of wipe out some of those pieces. So one thing I want to do, and one thing I, um, you know, I'm kind of getting back, trying to get back into art education on, on YouTube. You guys have seen, I've been putting up a lot of personal videos with my personal story. I know a lot of my subscribers don't really, might not really, really be interested in seeing that stuff. But, I mean, it's honest to me, and I've just kind of been putting it up just so that, you know, people can kind of know where I'm at and people can think about me and pray for me if they want to. Um, 
But yeah, looks like this is the last frame. So um, yeah, mentally, um, of course, I'm still going, kind of going through a lot of those hardships. But right now, um, I have enough of, uh, you know, uh, a strong enough mental right now to know that I, I could still um, develop my YouTube as an art education channel. Um, if you guys don't know, I've already, um, or I'm working professionally as an art teacher at an after school program in Northern California. And um, I don't really teach that much digital art and animation. I teach more traditional and fine arts, uh, you know, acrylic paint and drawing, basic drawing to kids, measuring and stuff like that. So yeah, um, let's take a look at now at this walk animation from where from about right here. I can select all these frames. I'm going to save first because sometimes things get uh, messed up in playback. We're going to save. Okay, wait for that to save. Now we're going to hit playback. So it looks like... Oh yeah, because you can see that her hair... And the coat here so if i were to add some hair here uh like that and then the coat would look like this um, but i can do onion skins on that later so i'm just going to leave it as is what's important is that you can see you can see oh i missed one you can see the silhouette of all the frames and with that it's going to be enough for the animations to be usable Okay, let's play again. Yep, that's good enough. So how I would save it, you could export all the frames, but I kind of space these out. So I don't want to export every single frame because uh, Krita will, all, will export all the frames in between. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to save as. So um, let's see, where do I put the, I'm in here, SPR animation, sorbet, uh, completed. So I'm just going to go, I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm gonna go line animations here. Um, looks like we have, uh, it looks like, um, oh, it looks like Nick created a folder with like all of this stuff here. So walk forward is what we have. And so I would save this as an image. So I would call it, oh, it looks like there's a bunch in here. I'm actually gonna delete these because I have new ones. Um, or maybe, Here's what I'll do. Um, I'll just call it, I'll, I'll just have a new title. Sorbet space F walk forward walk. Uh, look, let's call it zero one. Okay. So I would go to the next frame and then we call it. Whoa. Uh oh. Oh, are we celebrating this video with a Krita crash? Uh oh. Oh, good. It didn't crash. Okay. So we would, we would, uh, so you see how the old ones actually have this big white silhouette around it. It looks like I already put it in, but, oh, also it looks like I forgot to take out the background for that save. So I'm actually going to go back and take out the background and then we're going to replace this file. And then we're going to save the second one as sorbet f walk zero two and then i would continue repeating that until the um i get to the last frame there so it's kind of a lot of work um but it's still faster than exporting all the frames and then sort of deleting them or maybe i don't know maybe one is faster than the other but anyway um that's kind of how we're going to do that so i'm going to keep doing this one on stream and i hope you guys enjoyed the video see you later Bye bye